are you doing? Okay, yeah. Come on, pretend it's 4th of July week. Let's have a little more enthusiasm. That's goddamn right. We're never gonna beat the British with that first applause break. All right, hello, hi. Hey. That's the guy who's not on the show, everybody. Let's not make him feel weird, but make sure every joke and aside you have tonight is directed at him. If anyone else comes up, still focus exclusively on him. He's with a comic, so he's stuck. So it's consistent, okay? And that way we can all watch Silver's recording, and we can judge each other against how we do with him. I know a couple others, but not that anyone fucking doesn't want. I will not fuck you, I'm married. This guy doesn't respect marriage at all. I have a ring, sir. I have children. Are you trying to destroy my life? No, I wasn't trying to interrupt the show. I'm sorry. Well, you didn't interrupt the show. You interrupted my marriage. And that's way more terrible. Edit that so it doesn't sound questioning. Uh, all right. Well, this is going to be one hell of a show, guys. Uh, it's July 4th week. Look, everyone's saving up there. Go out in the middle of the week and get fucked up for the 3rd and the 4th. I get that. That makes perfect sense to me. Um, I don't need to go over the rules, because you all know them. Um, people who are standing at the bottom of the steps and wondering if they should come on up, come on up, it's fine. Or don't, just sit, that's fine. Uh, it's okay, we don't bite. I bite. Okay. How do you think I got married? My wife stuck her hand under a log in the river, I bit and held on, and then we got married. I'm pretending my wife is a catfish noodler. I want everyone to get a very attractive picture of my wife in their heads. Uh, all right. I, uh, we'll just get started on this thing. Uh, yesterday was my birthday, which... Uh, okay, thank you. Comma, which I don't give a fuck about. But uh, my wife somehow convinced me that because we have kids, I have a two-year-old, it's very important that we celebrate my birthday, so they see that things are exciting, that we have fun as a family, that we do events, that there's things to look forward to as you get older. I don't know. She, she was way more convincing about it. So yesterday we woke up, and we came downstairs, and she had like a birthday breakfast laid out for me, and wanted to do happy birthday, and my son could not give a fuck less. She was just like, happy birthday, it's daddy's birthday, happy birthday, daddy, happy birthday. And my son was just going for the TV remote and ignoring me. And she kept trying to do it all day long, and all day long he could not give a fuck. And so by like lunchtime, she was like, what do you want for your birthday? And I was like, can we just stop this? Please, this feels terrible. Huh. If you guys did, you know, maybe people would have laughed at that if they were here. This guy laughed at it, but I think he's just trying to cover for the fact that he tried to fuck me and ruin my life. Uh, all right, well, the good news is I can only ever do that bit on July 2nd, and July 2nd's now over for me, so I don't have to make it work. Uh, did you guys watch, anyone watch the debate? Yeah. You guys watch the debate? Yeah. You watch the debate? Yeah. What'd you think? Give me your thoughts. I think old people need to not be in government anymore. We beat healthcare. <laughs> There you go, that's my debate bit. I actually, I, was, I wrote a bunch of jokes about the debate, but as I was watching it, I started to feel sad. I was like, this isn't fun. <laughs> Remember when he thought Hillary put her in jail? Like, that was kind of fun. This was not fun. This was like, it made me feel bad. I, I got halfway through the debate, and I was like, I should call my grandma tomorrow. <laughs> this is a, a sad moment. I, I did like that after the debate, everyone, like on ABC, they were like, he's too old, he can't run again. And NBC is like, that was a disaster. He can't run again. And CNN was like, he cannot run again. And Fox News was like, he did great. <laughs> he should run again. Uh, I did like, I do like every then all the papers I turn on. They're like, he can't run again. But, 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 but he can still be president until then. It's like, oh, okay. Are you guys planning to kill him in January? What does that mean? <laughs> Either he can't do it again or he can't do it now. It's not like, what's the artificial timer for? It's like running the clock down, the two-minute warning. Okay. Fuck that, too. Uh, speaking of uh, brains that don't work anymore, um, 
You ever hear sometimes women will say that men think with their 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 uh, balls and not their brain? Yeah. I don't I don't understand what's wrong with that. Honestly, when I think about it myself, I don't know the difference. Like in my case, both my brain and my balls are pink and wrinkly. That's one thing they have in common. Yes, my balls are pink. Look at the color of my legs. Did you think my balls would be brown? What is that face? Of course they're pink. And that's not even when I'm excited. When I'm excited, they're beet red. I'm talking full schismatra, which is not the one I was thinking of. I was thinking of the other Russian one made with beets. Dulash. Yes. Yeah, curry, exactly. Uh, on top of that, like uh, my brain and my balls, both of them, if they get overheated, uh, I make bad decisions and can't think straight. Uh, and of course, if uh, either one of them, my brain or my balls, gets infected, I would just die. See, guys, that's joke structure. It's not funny, but it is joke structure. Which, that's good if we're doing a writing class. Boy, oh boy, this is going to be a fun show, guys. Um, I was watching. Uh, I was watching uh, TV and all these commercials kept popping up for a new product. It's, uh, it's, it's a woman who comes on and, and she's selling a deodorant and she's like, hey, I don't know if you got, we got this new deodorant, it's great. It works here, and she goes, here? Which I kind of get, because I like purving out at the gym. And then she goes, and it works here. Shh. I didn't know that was a thing. In fact, I don't think it was a thing. I think that's a new thing. And I gotta be honest, I don't like it. That's suspicious as shit. If I'm hanging out with you all day long and I eventually get your pants off, your pussy should smell like river water and stale Miller highlight from my fingers. Not, not fresh linens. That's suspicious as shit. But I do believe in equality, guys, so if anyone would like to come up after the show, um, I am wearing my own version of that. I have sandalwood balls tonight. You guys like to check that out. It's a, it's a masculine scent that uh, reminds you of wood shops. All right, uh, this sucks. Uh, I'll finish with this. Uh, you know, since I do have kids, it's my job to teach my kids important lessons. Uh, teach them how to be a man, you know? And uh, my son's two now, so he's at that age where he cries all the time. He cries over everything. So the other night, my uh, wife and I are putting the kid to bed, and she asks for a kiss, and he says no. And she says, come on, give me a kiss. Very rapey. She says, come on, give me a kiss. And he says, no. She says, mommy's going to steal a kiss anyways. And she does. She goes over and kisses him. And he starts crying. So I teach you how to be a man. So I never say, hey, hey, knock that shit off. Be a man. What just happened? Mommy stole a kiss. Stole a kiss from you. In this country, in this state, under the criminal code, that is called burglary. So that's burglary. Where should you do it? In your room? Your room. A man's home is his castle. Castle doctrine. Here's what you do. Next time mommy comes over and steals a kiss from you, next time she burgles a kiss, you plant both feet on the ground, square your shoulder, and you shoot that bitch right in the chest. <laughs> Be man. Anyways, I've been the widower, Jacob McFadden, everybody. You guys ready to start the show? You guys ready to get this thing moving? You guys have been um, waiting for your turn to do this, so we're going to have fun tonight. Uh, your first comic coming to the stage, you guys are going to love this guy. He is, um, I always say he's from San Diego, and that is a vicious lie. Um, your next comic actually comes from the Hundred Acre Woods. Um, he's put on pants tonight, and he's shaved his face, everybody. Put your hands together for the lovable rascal, Ben Pierce. <laughs> hey, your next comic is a real lovable, irascible sort. He's the kind of guy who, like, after a show, he likes to play I'm Gonna Tickle You Till You Pee out on the porch. The guy is undefeated. So if you want to pee, I'm telling you. Touch this man. Come to my house, baby. Come on. This guy's a home wrecker. All right, your next comic, the most out and about homosexual in the scene. Give it up for Jack Parker. Woo! <laughs> All good. Ah, uh, don't tell people my tickler and then run away from it, Jacob. All right. <laughs> Guys, I just turned 30 and no, stop. Shut, shut the fuck up. I never said it was a good thing. Guys. Jacob, you're 47 and you stopped growing at 12. What are you cheering about? 
Tall 12 year old. Average. Okay. Uh, no, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to, uh, I was hoping that by the time I t turned 30, I'd be, the, I'd be at least a little smarter, or at the very least, I'd be capable of thinking before I spoke. The other problem is, uh, with ADHD, my brain takes shortcuts a lot, so I'll assume I know what I'm saying, and I won't realize I've said it wrong until after the words have been said. Like, uh, the first time I ever met my first girlfriend's parents, we were at a lovely, uh, dinner, uh, her entire family was there, and, uh, I realized I'd been kind of, like, steamrolling the conversation, just talking and talking and talking, not really letting anyone else get a, wor a word in edgewise. <clears throat> and I became aware of that, and I went, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I have a bad habit of, and the term I was looking for was railroading a conversation. What I turned it into was I have a really bad habit of running a train on someone the first time I meet them. <laughs> and that's not how you want to introduce yourself to your girlfriend's parents. I, uh, I had a worse version of that. Um, where you ever got, you guys ever make up a word in your head and it sounds a lot worse in reality? Like I was talking to a comedian friend of mine, she was complaining that there was this guy that kept trying to flirt with her because, by uh, putting her down all the time, making fun of her. And she wasn't about that shit. And I went, wow, that sounds real annoying. A couple of weeks went by, she mentions this guy again in casual conversation. I just look up, I wasn't a part of the conversation. I went, oh yeah, that, all right, what's that called when someone does that? Uh, Negging, yes. Negging, yes, yes. So, a person who negs, you would naturally assume the word would be, not gonna say it again, okay, I look like me. Guys, I haven't raised my hands above my nipples since Charlottesville, okay? <laughs> just out of sheer fear that someone's gonna snap a pick and go alt-right at the rise in Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> it's concerning, guys. Dude, white supremacy is a major problem in this country because now it's starting to affect me and I'm not about that shit. I, I don't appreciate it. Um, I get a lot of like targeted ads by like all of these like alt-right groups that are like really desperate for recruits uh, is what I've realized. Like, they, they kind of act like a pick me girl, if I'm being entirely honest with you. They're like, Jack, Jack, come over to us, come on. Hey, we like all the same things you like. I'm like, no, you fucking don't. They're like, you like Vikings? I'm like, yeah, I kind of like Vikings. They're like, get over here, we love Vikings. Hey, you're bald? I'm like, no, nope, I have a shaved head. They're like, even better, it was a choice. It wasn't, I started losing my hair when I was 14 years old. Uh, yeah, it was a prob it was problematic. Buddy, I didn't finish jerking off until I was 17. I started when I was 12. Yeah. I punched a hole through my ceiling first go at it. It was rough. Damn! Uh, all right, doesn't warrant that shit stain, but... Uh, sorry. I'm being very mean. I don't know how to respond to positive affirmations. Uh, no. Uh, it is weird, because like, they will try to get you for just about anything. Like Apparently there's a lot of secret ways to identify with neo-Nazis. Case in point, let's see how many of you get this before I finish the joke. I, uh, had some, I had two pairs of shoes that were kind of worn out. The laces on my black boots were worn out. And uh, the soles of my red running shoes were worn out. And I went, oh gosh darn, I sucks. Oh wait, I'm going to be thrifty. I'll take the broken laces out of my black boots and I'll take the red laces in my running shoes and put them in the black boots. And I walked through the city of Richmond to my good friend's house where we were about to go do something. He looked at me, looked down and went, that has been a sign of white supremacy since 1982. <laughs> it was real weird that he could name the exact year, but I digress. All right, do I have something real quick I can get out on? Uh, I opened the wrong app, so I do not. All right, guys, that's all I want to work on. Please give it up for Jake McBath. Bald, bearded, white guy into Vikings accidentally signals he's a neo-Nazi. Surprising. <laughs> All right, thought there'd be more laughs on that. Uh, Jack Parker. What can we say about Jack Parker? 
Not a lot. He's pretty forgettable. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, okay. Hey, I don't, I don't like the guy who yells, oh, shit, after a light put down. Because it does make me judge whether or not I went too far. Uh, all right, we're going to keep this thing moving. Uh, your next comic is a member of our nation's armed services. And uh, as we all know, this month especially, um, they're all heroes. Um, they're not just people who graduated high school and realized they were too stupid to get to VCU, so they went to the military for four years, and they got it paid for by us. They're all heroes. Every one of them rescuing hostages and taking out terrorists, not just cutting potatoes and riding on laundry ships. All of them heroes, every single one. Even the guys who just do data entry, all heroes. All deserving healthcare for the rest of their lives for doing what I do, but in a uniform. All heroes. I'm proud to be an American where I gotta pay for Chris. Uh, all right, uh, your next comic is eating up my time and my social security. Put your hands together for Chris. Join her! Give it up for Jacob. Yesterday was his birthday. I messaged him because the advice I was given that Facebook might take it down and start watching him. I said, happy birthday, Jacob, the only January 6th survivor. Hasn't grown since 1972. Anyways, guys. <laughs> hey, just because your wife marks a little higher, that's your son, not you. I used to be taller until I got old. <laughs> You've been old since 1972. Uh, Let's get into the. <laughs> good riffing. <laughs> good riffing coming from the 47 year old. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, I have a YouTube channel, as this goes on YouTube, and I just wrote this dumb joke, so we're going to go with it. The power in my household shifts a lot because I have 26,000 subscribers. So anything that my girlfriend and I argue about, I just say, well, I know who's giving me the one thumbs down on my videos on YouTube. But anyways, I bring her here because she's the only woman in the crowd I can please. Just not tonight because we drove separate. So you guys have been following the debate recently. You saw, you saw it. You know, Trump and Biden were arguing about who could be better in golf. I think the only person that Biden could beat in golf is Mitch McConnell because that guy strokes more than anybody I know. That is true. Um, have you been following Boeing recently over the past year? We've been seeing that planes, their doors are coming off in the midair. They have a spaceship now. Since last week, these uh, two astronauts have been stuck in space, but they're safe. I'm trying to figure out, upon uh, Boeing's safety regulations, it's always up in the air. I feel like that landed better. <laughs> Not their planes or spaceships, obviously. Um, so I bought a used diary, and Frank's diary. <laughs> I'm gonna continue her story. We're gonna go to Disney World tomorrow. <laughs> It's going to be a happy place. She wasn't in a happy place for two years. <laughs> um, anyways, you guys know the Thrasher magazine? Did y'all grow up with the Thrasher skateboard magazine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the longest time growing up, I thought, that was, uh, I thought it was a really hardcore porn magazine. My friends were like, hey, I got a Thrasher magazine at home. I was like, fuck yeah, dude, I want to see that. I've heard about the porn mags in the bush. You got one at home, let's go. When he showed me what it was, it was not the wood I was expecting. <laughs> Maybe uh, not fancy skateboarders here. So where I live, there's a lot of traffic. I tried skipping around the traffic recently to get to work a little faster, driving on the sidewalks, but that delayed my time even more because there's a lot more foot traffic than regular traffic. There's people, never mind. <laughs> It's always funny when I like try to like explain it or something to people. I did this one uh, at the other mic I was at. So I travel for work, and a lot of the guys that I work with are a lot of like older guys. This guy was super country, uh, didn't really know much much about like cell phones. He still had a flip phone. This guy was about 79, 80. 
and I was working with him, and we were in the middle of a job, and he was talking to me, and he was like, hey, I always tell everybody this story, but um, they don't talk to me after. So I was like, all right, let's hear it. So he was like, you know, we we're talking about cars, and he was like, yeah, my father and I used in the 60s and 70s used to drag BBCs. And today's terminology, that means something a lot different. So I see why people don't talk to him. I explained to him when he said dragging, drag racing, big block Chevys down a quarter mile track is not the same thing that we talk about in today's terminology. That story was funnier when I heard it from him. Uh, Trump talked about recently that uh, he gave an interview, he's been giving a lot of interviews. Uh, Trump was like, uh, you know, quite frankly, black Americans think I'm the greatest president since Abraham Lincoln. Cool. What movie theater uh, do you frequent the most? <laughs> but recently, Trump also was like, uh, <laughs> I'll let it, <laughs> hey, 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 relax. We know who you're voting for. <laughs> we see your shoes. <laughs> no, true. My girlfriend didn't know that you had those shoes for the longest time she's been coming here. I was like, you've never seen them? They're the most American fucking shoes ever. I'll, I'll get out of here on this. Trump said recently, he said that uh, people with student visas should get their citizenship when they graduate college. I said, cool. That's a, <laughs> that'll be the first time Trump has been able to give anybody that's graduated college because we all know what happened at Trump University. But you got to give them the American dream. $100,000 in college debt. That's my time. I won't get out because he defended my freedom. I can stay here if I want. And just so we're clear, I wear these shoes because I want everyone to know I have a lot of guns. Just like so many guns. They're soft, doesn't count. Oh, they're not soft, I'll tell you that. They're uh, harder than my dick, to be honest. Uh, all right, let's keep this up. <laughs> Chris said he's gonna, he bought Anne Frank's diary, he's gonna take her to Disneyland. That's gonna be so uncomfortable for you when she's trying to stay quiet on Space Mountain. <laughs> and she goes, wee! The story ends. At least I think, I never read it. That book seemed like a downer to me. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're gonna keep this thing moving. Surprise, surprise, I don't think your next comic's here, so we're gonna move on to our old favorite. He has not been here in a while. He's been too busy getting paid to do shows and eating free food on Tuesdays. But thankfully, he came back tonight to check in on what it was like when he's one of us little people. And it's exactly what he remembers. Everybody, put your hands together for the wild prospector, Kale Moore. Yeah, I imagine Anne Frank going to Disney World and she would probably instinctively want to get on all the dark rides. <laughs> the Haunted Mansion, Space Mountain. Those are the only two I know of. I've never been to Disney World. Um, yeah, speaking of being an old prospector, I heard the music downstairs at the end of Chris's set and I couldn't hear the whole thing. All I heard was some, some sweet piercing harmonica and it made me feel like I was doing stand-up around a campfire out on the prairie. I have been listening to a podcast about Billy the Kid recently, so I've been learning a lot about the Old West. And what I've gathered so far is that being in a, sh a sheriff in the Old West must have been kind of what it feels like to be a parent of multiple children. Because, like, you know, one guy, two guys would get in an argument in a saloon, and one would fucking shoot the other, and the sheriff would barge in, and the guy would just go, He called me a liar! He called me a son of a bitch! Um, That's funny! Thank you. I know, it's, you know, it's good to be back here to grace you all with my presence. Uh, yeah. My old stomping grounds. Uh... It's, uh, it's almost July 4th, so uh, it's always a good time to reflect on our country's history. And uh, I went to Philly recently and saw a lot of the, you know, the OG original colonies government, the, you know, the old state house and all that shit. And uh, 
our tour guide told us something interesting, which is that the first immigration crisis, right after the country founded, was about French people. There's a lot of debate over whether to let French people into our country or not. And to be honest, I felt like that was one we could have turned away. We could have done without. Although I am kind of glad that we didn't have as many French people as, you know, as we've had other immigrants to this country. Like, otherwise, every single major city would have a little France in it. <laughs> Where, you know, everyone wears striped shirts. And you spot it from wherever you're at in the city by the column of smoke from all of the cheap cigarettes. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of France, uh, I read an article recently about this, this mystery about there's a beach in France where for 30 years phones shaped like Garfield have been washing up on the beach. They just recently figured it out. It was like a sunken shipping container that kept like the waves would take the Garfield phones to the beach. But I, I just imagine some Catholic guy like wandering onto this beach littered with Garfield phones and thinking it was a sign. He's like, what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> he builds a giant Garfield-shaped ark. <laughs> you know, speaking of Independence Day, uh, as, as we all know, um, our democracy is not the healthiest right now. Uh, and there's been a lot of uh, talk about whether Biden should step down or not. And I personally feel like the best outcome of this country is if Biden just like croaked before the election happened. Like not that we should foment that, but ideally he would die of old age. The only problem is that I'm a pretty spiritual person and I feel like if Biden dies before the election there's a strong chance that his vengeful spirit comes back and haunts whoever takes over as president. <laughs> it's like Kamala. <laughs> Damn. Kamala. What are, you, what are you up to, Kamala? You're not busy, are you? It's like we can go get some ice cream. Let's call, call up old Benny Netanyahu. Let's go get some ice cream. <laughs> Uh, I love playing with that fucking thing. Uh, this, honestly, uh, you know, this night, it's a light night. We've got one crowd member. Uh, well, yeah, we had two for a brief period, and then she left. Um, but now, it's always good to see camaraderie from stand-up comedians, because usually I see improv people and I get jealous, because improv people are just way too fucking sincere. They're like, we're all in this together, everybody. Uh, like, I saw... There was a comedy club that specializes in improv, and they had a post on their Instagram recently of this girl. There was a picture of her, and the post was like, we're gonna miss you so much it hurts. You've been such an important part of the last best family. Like, we don't know how we're gonna go on without you. Every day was a treasure working with you. And I thought she fucking died. <laughs> It turns out she just got a different bartending job. <laughs> like, I expected the, the post to have, like, it's so hard to say goodbye. <laughs> like, if a stand-up, if a Richmond stand-up died, it would probably be us taking pictures, of, like, of, like, us dumping PBR on his gravestone. <laughs> be like, I hope you're sucking Satan's cock in hell, you piece of shit. Hell yeah, dude. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that's my time. I've been Kale Moore, thank you. Hell yeah, everyone, Kale's right. Look around this room, we're all so rock and roll. We're either the devil. Fuck yeah, man. We're all like Judas fucking priest, dude. Uh, Kale, Kale uh, uh, you know, he did the debate thing. I already did that, but he did it too, I guess. That's just stealing my jokes, it's fine. Um, no big deal, no big deal. I, I did my brain, I had my mind blown on Friday. There's a compilation of Kamala Harris going around. She, for three years, she's been in the same line every speech. She goes, uh, you know, it gives us a possibility to see what can be unburdened by what was, which is incredible foreshadowing for this November. 
Because Biden's going to die. She's what can be unburned by what, well, okay. I know, it's, it's her fault. The Senate structure is very confusing. I'm not trying to read Longfellow while listening to a speech by the Vice President. Uh, all right, everybody, your next comic. This is a prize stop-in. Uh, everybody, put your hands together for Scotty Moore. Scotty Moore, everybody. Scotty, are you really from Orlando? Yes, I was born I didn't know that, so was I. Oh, really? Yeah, that's why you and I are both so unlikable. <laughs> but I bet you both, we both know exactly how we would rob a Taco Bell. Uh, well, I'm gonna tell you about fucking play. My play is foolproof, dude. I'm getting away with it. It's crazy. You say you would get away with it. I won't. Uh, yeah, that's right. You know why? Because I identify as white. You are actually white. Yeah. yeah well, no, because I'm gonna dress like Tom Petty, and then the police will investigate. Uh, all right, we're gonna keep this thing moving. Those are all Florida jokes. Uh, guys, your next comic. Wow. What can I say about this guy? Uh, for starters. He served admirably in Vietnam. We gotta appreciate that. This guy uh, took back Hamburger Hill. Gotta appreciate that. Different war, but it doesn't matter. He took it back. <laughs> they wanted it. He said, fuck that, I'm taking it back. <laughs> Punched a random Chinese guy in the face. Not even the correct country. Took it back. <laughs> and that's the end of his bio, actually. All it has here is he punched a Chinese guy at a place called Hamburger Hill. <laughs> For America. Yes. So, uh, all right, your next comic is an anti-Asian violent bigot. Everybody, put your hands together for Wayne Marshall. <laughs> Thank you for punching that Chinese guy. <laughs> Jake got it a little wrong. I didn't actually take back hamburger, hell, I just took the hamburger, that's all. <laughs> so a couple years ago, we adopted a dog. Dog doesn't love to get his nails cut. So we looked online, we found some tips. One of the tips was to put saran wrap around your head and put peanut butter on it to distract the dog. And it works really well. I can get through about one, two paws before I pass out. Um, excuse me. No, I'm, I'm doing new stuff tonight, so I seem to have forgotten my way here. Hang on a minute, let me just grab my phone, sorry. <laughs> All right, thanks, sorry about that. You got it, baby. A couple years ago, I got addicted to hibachi. Not so much hibachi, <laughs> but having food thrown at my face. It got really bad, it got to the point where I was always at a hibachi restaurant, drained my bank accounts out. <laughs> my low point was when I stole or intercepted a shrimp from both a 70-year-old and a 7-year-old in the same dinner party. They banned me from all the local Richmond hibachi restaurants. Took my picture and put it up. It wasn't a great picture, though. I had all these little shrimp-shaped bruises all over my face. <laughs> Got to the point where, since I couldn't go back to the hibachi restaurants, I ended up at Taco Bell late at night waiting for that sketchy guy Doug to clock in, because he'll do anything for two bucks. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> okay, there we go. I also found out recently that Chuck E. Cheese has kind of an insane backstory, but one of the things I pulled from it is that apparently he was in an orphanage. Kind of like Stuart Little in the movie was also in an orphanage. Which brings up the question, why so many mice in orphanage? Who's allowing this? That's way too many mice. I mean, I would think that the minimum requirement to be in uh, to be taken into an orphanage is not a mouse. And then the weird thing is, is that in the Stuart Little movie, Stuart, I'm sorry, in the Stuart Little novel, the original novel, Mrs. Little gave birth to Stuart naturally. So it was a human woman giving birth to a mouse. So I don't know about you, but if I'm Mr. Little, I'm probably sitting there like, honey, that trip you took to Disney by yourself a while ago. Did you fuck a mouse? <laughs> They just signed a new bill on J uh, July 1st that went into effect in Virginia. If you're driving down the road and you hit an animal, then you can call local police. They will come out, they will certify it, and quote, award you a certificate. <laughs> Which is kind of extra until you think about the fact that if you get 10 of those certificates, 
you can redeem them for half off bail when you get into a fist fight at the Waffle House. <laughs> I grew up in the southwest part of Virginia, close to the West Virginia border. I went back recently to visit my sisters, and they filled me in on a pretty interesting piece of information. A couple towns over in Princeton, West Virginia, apparently if you're walking down the street carrying a Mountain Dew bottle, the police will be watching you. And this is because the prostitutes in Princeton, West Virginia, carry Mountain Dew bottles as sort of a proverbial open for business, come inside. Maybe not the best choice of words. You get the gist, I'm the gist. So it got me wondering, are they leaving money on the table, these corporations? Maybe they should be sponsoring sex work. Think about it. Prostitution, brought to you by Mountain Dew. They've already got the slogan, do the do. And then there's so many varieties of Mountain Dew that maybe the type of Mountain Dew that the person's carrying would be an indicator as to what services they offer. For example, Mountain Dew Code Red, closed for business. Or maybe open, if that's your thing. <laughs> yeah! Baja Blast, that one's kind of tricky. It's a Taco Bell exclusive, so it can only be performed in a Taco Bell bathroom. The, uh, <clears throat> this, the next one is kind of a premium option. It's a collaboration with McDonald's. The prostitute of your choice will dress up as Grimace and give you a hand job while she berates you. Yeah! You're a piece of shit. <laughs> and the last one, there's a new flavor that they just released called Liberty Chill. Now Liberty Chill is when the prostitute dresses up as the Supreme Court. You dress up as women's rights so that they can fuck you. Thank you, that's my time. Wayne Marshall, everybody! Woo! For Wayne. My favorite part of Wayne's set was when he said, uh, in Stuart Little, the movie, but in the original novel. Wow. Is there anything, is there any idea more insufferable than the guy who tells you the Stuart Little novel is better than the movie? Hey, that movie is alright, but the book blows it out of the water, dude. They left out the whole act where he finds religion. Alright. I killed my own momentum. I do that a lot. Your next comic. Wow, Zowie, what a treat, everybody. Do you like Rice Krispie Bars? Because your next comic is the Rice Krispie Bars of comedy. She's sticky, sweet, and light on calories. Everybody, put your hands together for the marshmallow-infused Grace Moyer. I, like, fully don't understand what that meant, but I like Rice Krispies, so I'm gonna take it as nice and genuine and not weird in any way. Um, I am also doing some new jokes tonight. Kind of new jokes, but also kind of just like thoughts that I have so you guys can see if they're, you know, funny. Um, yeah, I'm uh, currently experiencing my ideal uh, relationship dynamic, which is um, a long distance situationship. It's really cool for me because like I'm very romantic, but I hate relationships. So, um, but it's just weird, like, which things make me uncomfortable and which don't. You know, like, uh, it feels too soon for me to delete my dating apps. But, like, I stopped taking my birth control. Um, it's okay, guys. My situation ship is a girl. I'm not... <laughs> Not trying to trap a man. Not in the current state of the world. Or ever, honestly. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to have a baby. I'm just, for the first time in a while, I know for sure that I'm not gonna have a baby. Um, yeah. Uh, anyone here have beliefs? <laughs> um, <laughs> not me, really. I have like, I have a lot of opinions, but I don't really have, 
Yeah, like I have opinions about real shit, okay? Norman fucking Rockwell by Lana Del Rey is the greatest album of all time. But like, I, who am I to decide whether like God is real or whatever, you know? Like to me, all belief systems are kind of equally stupid. So I don't really want to pick one. Like, cause I just think it's crazy how it's like, it's like men will make fun of me for liking astrology and then invest in crypto. <laughs> I've known girls who will like make fun of all Christians and then go home and cast spells. It's like, you're hot, you're gay, it's cool, but like, you're not a witch. <laughs> okay, you don't have magic powers. <laughs> Be fucking serious. Uh, I guess, like, if I did have to choose a belief system, uh, I kind of believe in astrology, but, like, just in the sense that, like, I slept with every zodiac sign of men, and then when I got to the end, I decided I didn't want to sleep with men anymore. Yeah, that's, um... I don't know where I'm gonna go with that one. <laughs> it's just a true fact. People say, which sign was the best? I say, eh. Um, anyways. Uh, you guys know how to drive? Woo! You can tell this bitch just learned how to drive. <laughs> She's like, I'm from New York. Bitch, you grew up here. <laughs> Love you. Um, but yeah, like you guys, um, you use like uh, Google Maps or whatever when you drive. Yeah. 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 Um, like I'm always just confused by like which things they choose to say out loud and which ones they don't. You know, like recently uh, my, my Google Maps told me keep straight past Hooters. <laughs> and I was like, okay, interesting landmark. <laughs> and then they said it like two more times. <laughs> and when I passed the Hooters, it was like, not at an intersection. <laughs> there was no right turn lane leading into Hooters. There was no fork in the road. Like, there was no reason to tell me that. <laughs> At first I was like, I was just like, who designed this software? You know what I mean? Which Hooters girl did her husband cheat on her with? <laughs> that she's so adamant to not go to Hooters. And then I realized they were being homophobic. Yeah, because I'm on my way to Joanne's fabric store. Okay, not Michael's, Joanne's. I don't think you're allowed in Joanne's unless you're at least a two on the Kinsey scale. And like, I'm on the way to Joanne's fabric store. I'm listening to Chapel Roan. And you're gonna tell me to keep straight past Hooters? Not gonna fucking happen. Um, I don't know exactly where I'm gonna go with that joke, but this was fun. Uh, I'm Grace. I'm not straight. Shout out to Hooters. Shout out to Jacob. Grace Moyer, everybody. Give it up for Grace Moyer. And Silver, I'd like a recording of Grace's set, just to end part where she says you can't go into Joanne's unless you're a two on the Kinsey scale. Because next time my wife tries to make me go with her, I'm going to be like, hey, she's Italian and from the Midwest. I'm not a, you know, a, I don't know where she'll put in there. It'll be offensive. I said, I'm not, you know, you didn't marry a, and she'll go, okay, good. You can stay home. Uh, by the way, Grace, I love the fact that you have an appeal to heaven flag on your right arm. And a hickey. Oh my god, it's a random bruise. Why would I have a hickey on my arm? Uh, well, it, it, I called it a hickey because it looks like teeth and lips. Yeah. It looks like somebody just started sucking on your forearm. Wait, so what do you mean appeal to heaven's flag? 
Uh, pop out your phone and look up, uh, you know, Supreme Court Appeal to Heaven, and then go, oh no, I'm a Christian nationalist. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now I kind of want to wait, because otherwise halfway through Judge set, she's going to go, oh no! <laughs> Uh, yeah, she doesn't like that face. Is not a happy face. Yeah, I hope you like being married to Justice Alito, because that's what the Supreme Court's ruled. That's what happened. All right, we're gonna keep this thing moving. Uh, your next comic is the only comic in the city who's declared three times that he's gonna vote for Donald Trump, um, and that's not just a stereotype based on his name. Everybody, let me make sure I get this hillbilly shit right. Let me find my card. Uh, your next comic definitely does not know how to play a jug, and he thinks that white people can sing the blues. Everybody, put your hands together for Judson Howard. White people invented the blues. <laughs> we sure did. We made those black guys real sad. We've been, we have been subjugated against. <laughs> Sweet Home Alabama. It's a song. Um, and uh, earlier, Grace was talking about getting off birth control. Watch out, my ex girlfriend got pregnant from a toilet seat. She swears to God. Um, July is Worldwide Watercolor Month. I feel like that's just weaning us off of Pride Month, honestly. That can, that, they could have combined those two. I feel like you don't have one without the other. Um, Y'all remember getting those weird ass uh, scoliosis tests in uh, in church? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, man, I, I, dude, this is so awkward, man. My priest used to check me for scoliosis like twice a week, man. I was like, I'm the one that might have scoliosis. Why are your pants off, dude? Um. Oh, I believe I'm the only survivor of sudden infant death syndrome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, see, I am uh, I'm so broke that all my surgeries are elective surgeries. I actually, uh, I will not go to the doctor until it directly affects my penis. I went to the doctor a couple months ago and uh, he said, so how long have you had these uh, heart palpitations? I don't know, 16 years, give or take. I said, when did your testicles start hurting you? I don't know, 45 minutes ago, give or take. That's why I'm here. We gotta solve the important problems first. Um, I have a micro penis. I mean, I named my penis Mike Rowe because I've seen him do some dirty jobs. That's Discovery Dick. You send, you send him into the shit. <laughs> and everything's on camera. <laughs> um, oh, uh, I just wrote this down. Um, it's uh, witches in Richmond, like chicks that think they're witches. Um, yeah, there we go. I like to picture like a Richmond witch walking into like to buy supplies and saying like, where do you keep the vegan friendly eye of Newt <laughs> trying to kill King Duncan? <laughs> That's a McBeth joke. That's bad. All right, scratch that one. Um, I have been trying to do some more Richmonder things lately. I uh, I went to a Squirrels game. Yeah, on Breastfeeding Awareness Night. So <laughs> that was cool. And uh, I have also I've also switched to Duke's mayonnaise. Yeah, because that's a Richmond thing. I have also stopped using a turn signal. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's also a Richmond thing. I didn't realize that was a Richmond thing until some dude was like, hey man, this is Richmond. The only signaling we do around here is virtue. Now adopt a dog and get a sticker. And then run a distance and get a sticker. And then pick a side in a popular overseas conflict. <laughs> We'll let you know if you chose correctly. Because this is Richmond. Um, I have been trying to get used to Virginia slang when um, 
When I first moved up here, this guy I work with told me, he said, hey man, you're gonna love it in Virginia. You can walk around with your joan out. I said, my joan? He said, as long as you get a permit. So you mean to tell me I can get a permit to walk around with my dick out? He said, no, nah, man, you know your joint, your pistol. It's like, oh, damn. And that's when I learned joint can mean any goddamn thing you want it to mean. Uh, hell, my dad showed me his joint. I didn't even have to ask. It was nice. I asked, uh, would you, uh, would you still need a permit if you got a tiny little joint? Or can you just pull that thing out anywhere? Um, my grandma, she's got a tiny little joint. Dude, I saw a guy, I saw a guy in Shaco pull his joan out and start beating that motherfucker <laughs> in the middle of the damn street, whipping up some Duke's bum cum, and then, then, <laughs> then popped off a shot right in the middle of the joan. Um, I'm getting, I'm getting better at uh, Virginia slang. Um, do ladies have joints? Yes, they do. Ladies have them titty jumps or titty janks. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Uh, I like it when you hit it from the back and you can see them swinging around like this. You got them. <laughs> you got. You got to hit it in the right motion to get them into the perfect, perfect consecutive circles. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Um. Yeah. I wish I didn't have to take off my shirt to brush my teeth. I just have a really juicy mouth. <laughs> and it gets, it gets, I mean, you put something in that thing and it's just, oh man, God. Very, you got a very creamy mouth. That's it. I love y'all. All right, the creamy mouth, <laughs> Justin Howard. And just to, uh, just to correct the record, in the state of Virginia, you don't need a license to carry your John outside. If you cover it, you need a license, but oh, you, can, okay. you can walk around with it uncovered. Oh, okay. Thanks. Not that I've ever tried to intimidate someone while trying to get a refund. <laughs> what do I give a fuck if the store only hires 17-year-olds? That's not my problem. All right, guys, are we having a good time? Yeah. Is everyone drinking? Yeah. Even Ayush, who brought his raising canes in? That's what's up. Cane yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's a weird defense. <laughs> hey, this guy didn't support the business. He brought in outside food. Yeah, but I'm fucking committed. Yeah, yeah that's right. Where's your canes tattoo? Oh, I don't know. Not yet. So you're not committed. So this is basically just spitting in my face. You're they not actually, you're not actually a caniac. You're they just don't a fucking. Know where I'm from, you're man. just. They don't, they, have they don't have a tattoo where you're from. No, they don't have raising canes. I, I, yeah, but you bought the raising canes in Richmond. We have a tattoo shop every forty-five fucking feet. <laughs> Are All right, hey, hey, someone downstairs, there's a guy up here who needs a stick and poke of the Kane's logo before he leaves tonight. All right, your next comic. Uh, not a lot to say about this guy. Your next comic is, um, he's, a, he's a Richmond stalwart. Uh, he is the host of the storytelling show at Kava Club or something. Um, he has long hair like a girl, but he's a guy. Um, and on top of that, he talks too loud, and people just tell me his voice is annoying, and they wish he'd go up later in the show so they could leave. Um, with all that said, everybody, put your hands together for Will Minor. That's Jack, that's the bald one. I've got the hair, like I said, I'm a beautiful woman. Jacob, every time we have sex, I have to explain to you, I'm a woman, come on. 
He won't ever cuddle with me. It's awful. Keep it going for Jacob, everybody. Keep it going for uh, keep it going for John. Come on. If you enjoyed his comedy, you can see catch him all over Richmond with his dick out, just walking around. My joke? Yeah, exactly. He's still confused. Just won't put it away. Just a key insist on it's like, no, no, it means penis. I will get this. I swear to God. Okay, I'm gonna tell jokes. You were talking about witches. You were talking about the witches. My sister is a, I don't know, uh, my sister is a witch. You're a lesbian. I can't remember. It's one of the two. Like, I don't know. Do you guys know any witch? Do you guys know any witches? Do we know witches here? Yeah. Okay, we're seeing some nodding. Like, I don't know about you guys, maybe you relate to this. Like, 90% of me really wants to make fun of my sister for the witchy shit she does. But then, like, 10% of me is like, what if it's real? <laughs> what if I'm, like, making fun of my sister being like, ha, what are you gonna go burn another stupid candle? And I wake up and I'm like a frog. <laughs> See, some of you know fairy tales, witches turn people into frogs. It's a whole thing. I'll read you all a story. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, what do I want to work on tonight? I'm back. Oh god, I'm back on the dating apps. Anybody on the dating apps? Good. I don't think I saw any of you. That checks out. Either that or you all sliced, uh, what is it? Left on me. What the hell? Uh, J date, black people meet. <laughs> Farmers only. I'm a beautiful woman on FarmersOnly.com. I'm just looking for a man who can buck hay bales. <laughs> I'll have dinner on the table by the time you get home, sweetheart. Just go work on the tractor. Oh, boy, I'm on J-Date. Because, you know, love a good deal. Nah, that was me. <laughs> I know, that was me. Oh, no. Grace didn't like that one. She's definitely going to swipe left on me on J-Date now. We're all over it. Oh, man. I don't know, I know it's this thing, it's a funny thing on the dating apps, all the all the women are like, they're like, they treat themselves like roller coasters. They're like, you have to be this tall to ride this ride, sucker. They're all black women from the movie The Warriors. <laughs> I don't know why I said that like that. <laughs> yeah, you job, sucker. If you want to ride this ride, you gotta be this tall. <laughs> hey, all you cool cats, the Warriors are out on the street. Be sure to look out for them, the 82nd Street boys. They're coming your way. Next, this is a crowd that's seen the Warriors. I don't know, I just find that really funny. I always find it really weird that like, I don't get why tall girls won't date shorter guys. I think there's a lot of benefits there, you know what I mean? I think there's a lot of benefits, right? Like, first of all, they can probably swap clothes. Probably share clothes, right? If she's dating a shorter guy, definitely has a big car. Also, if she ever gets annoyed with him, she could just, you know, take his Xbox and put it somewhere real high. We had chairs. Okay, see? <laughs> Keep it going for Jacob McFadden's wife. She's seven feet tall. Woo! No, I'm just kidding. She's, in terms of uh, academia, she's a giant. She's way smarter than everyone. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. Yeah, she's a doctor, and I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to tell her you said that. Yeah. invite you over. Right. Oh, man, I was going to say right on, but I forgot the words. Okay. I know, Jacob, we're both killing it. Jacob just had another son. Yeah. And I... Just bought a betta fish. Yeah. yeah! I'm gonna keep this one alive, I swear to God. Me too. Yeah, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, do you wanna trade? <laughs> Dude, come on, we'll trade for a week. It'd be like the wife swap. Remember that fun show? Yeah. Oh, what a great show. It'd always be like some like super Christian, super atheist. I'm going off on it. That's, that was a show for a better time. That was when our president was a host of a fun show. Joe Rogan still had hair. You're laughing, you understand. It was a different time! Oh, I know, I'm almost not there. Not quite, almost there. I haven't given up just yet. Still got the sparkle in my eye. I still watch too much anime. What else did I want to work on tonight? What else did I want to work on? Oh yeah, I'm really dumb. I'm a very dumb person. Oh boy. Actually, I don't have time to do this joke. That joke takes forever. Okay. I'm a very dumb person. Was anybody else dumb? I'm a dumb kid. Hell yeah. I was not a good speller in school. I was a bad speller. What did they always tell like, but growing up, what did they always tell you when you didn't know how to spell a word? What did the teacher always say? Sound it out. Exactly. They would say that bullshit sound it out, which makes no fucking sense. That doesn't make any sense. If you, if I sounded out all the words, xylophone would start with a Z. Tsunami would start with an S. Don't mouth the punchlines. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> he saw me two hours ago. Go to hell. You're just like the word hors d'oeuvres. Go fuck yourself. That word makes no sense. Alrighty, I'm gonna leave on that. I'm so sorry I yelled at you. You're a good person. I'm gonna leave now. Goodbye. Well, minor.
better, everybody. Definitely not taking the too loud thing to heart, for sure. No, I'm sorry, Will. I never said that. Uh, everyone, this witches thing is really, is this, like, coming back again? Because I remember when I was when I was a young man uh, fucking around in the cities of Richmond, if a chick told you she was a witch, that was just her way of saying she was Wiccan, which is a way of saying she was fat and wore hoodies in August to cover up her scars. Um, based on Grace's and Sabet's reaction, that's still what it means. No, I said Grace and Sabet's. Yeah. Based on their reactions, that's still what it means, which actually makes me feel better because that means things change, but they always remain the same. And uh, I think it's so great that there's still a market for incense. Uh, all right, everybody, we're gonna keep this thing moving. Uh, we'll forget what I said about our proud Wiccan people who uh, have a legitimate religion that needs to be supported. Um, your next comic coming to the stage, everybody. Put your hands together for the decidedly not Wiccan, Sabat. for that and said something um, mean and true. It reminds me of a time that it's hard to say things that are mean and true in Richmond. You know, like it's, it's um, as a very straight progressive person, I've never felt more like um, afraid to like try and make a joke about anything that's outside of my community, you know? And it's actually real and serious and we're having a talk right now. Um, <laughs> But, which is fine, like I should be scared. You know, like my mom once told me when I was like, I'm afraid, you know, when you drive drunk. And she's like, you should be scared. And I was like, oh. It's like, I don't really know what the messaging is there. Also, like, does anyone else have parents that like, you feel like they exist in completely different simulations? And if they like, for some reason ever, like God forbid I have like a wedding, um, they like step into the same frame. I think that like, worlds would collide and that would be like the reverse big bang and like the universe would be complete does anyone else have parents like that yeah totally like it would just blow my mind to see them like an inch from each other and they used to have sex with each other isn't that crazy and they did that near me you know like they might have done it like around me <laughs> crazy Maybe that's why I'm so horny all the time. That's why my titties are up, up here. Like, like, this bra is so padded that this doesn't even, this doesn't hurt, you know? They say, they say, they say like, like, I don't feel anything, baby. Like, um, yeah, we love it. Yeah, someone I've had sex with this year, obviously. And that's not a joke, that's just true. Last time I did this mic, there were two. So, and I, I always, like thought oh my god wouldn't it be so fun to have like everyone I've ever had sex with in a room just like fighting for me no not fun at all especially when your whole set is about both of those guys and they're sitting there and there and you don't know which one to throw under the bus and so I just was like well one of you is about to find out I'm a liar um, yeah and it was, it, it was a guy that used to be my sugar daddy. I texted him that I was in trouble. I, yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm actually out of town and I'm in, I'm in trouble. Um, I really need you to send me money right now. And he did, and I bought a designer tracksuit with that money. Obviously, like my new era. It's not this one. This, this one is a designer tracksuit. I think I'm like trying to get into my like Guido Pop era, you know? Like pe people, I don't know if Guido Pop's a thing, but I'm gonna start singing it. Cause don't we all actually wanna be pop stars and like not comedians? You know what I mean? I'd rather be a pop star. If I could be singing, I could be doing, if, if, I, if I could sing, I'd be doing that. It's gonna get really earnest. Okay, um, so uh, I, I, I worked at a restaurant. Um, I just got fired. Uh, so yeah, thank you. I got um, dumped over text by my boss. Um, that's cool. But when I, when I was employed there, um, I found breast milk in um, the fridge, which naturally intrigued me as a naturopath. I hear it is the uh, most nutrient dense thing. I'm actually like making excuses. I totally just wanted to drink titty milk. You know, like, that's like the most gay I'll ever get. I just fucking love tits. I don't want to look at them. I just want to be them. I just want to be tits. I want veiny, milky, milky titties. I want to be able to, like, spray it on people. Yeah. Oh, are, you, oh, are you uncomfortable? Are you uncomfortable? It must be so hard to be uncomfortable. Um, 
Yeah, it's so funny. People say, like, can women be hot and funny? It's like, have you ever seen a dude be hot and funny? It's awesome. Grace is like, no. I'm like, yeah. Someone likes dicks too much. It's me. Um, okay, back, back to the breast milk. Okay, so I see it in the fridge, and I immediately think, whether I'm gonna have this argument with myself about whether or not I'm gonna drink this breast milk, but the argument is like, I'm already gonna do it. You know, it's like seeing like cocaine there and you're like, am I gonna have this chat with myself or am I just gonna do the line? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so I drank the breast milk and then um, it was pretty just like watery, you know, like it was pretty thin, like it wasn't really that delicious. I did feel changed when I walked out of the bathroom. Like I went into the bathroom at work. It felt like to do, Drugs, you know, I was like, this is, you know, I was hiding it. I like secretly told one of my coworkers, I was like, yo, like, I just drank breast milk in the bathroom. <laughs> Imagine the new girl comes up to you and is like, yo, I just drank breast milk in the bathroom. Like, how many questions would you have? Um, okay, I will land this plane, um, cause I know how to drive. Um, and uh, what am I saying about the breast milk? Yeah, so then I met a coworker who was like, oh, I have a six month old. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Are you breastfeeding him? She was like, yeah. I was like, what's your name? <laughs> have you ever drank someone's breast milk before ever even knowing their name? I have, um, yeah. All right. <laughs> Punchline to myself. Fuck it. Okay, that's me, Sabat Party. Sabat, everybody, keep it going for Sabat. By the way, did you guys know that uh, breast milk goes for six to eight dollars an ounce? Shit. That's an interesting fact, right? I guess. Yeah. Now tell my bitch wife to stop being mad that I know that. I'm just saying, the baby food costs a lot of money and we can make some back here. Huh. By the way, breast, that's, breast milk does not taste good. You know how goat milk tastes like goat? Breast milk tastes like human. You just drink it and you're like, mm, I just drank my wife. That's weird. Well, not in your case. You, you drank Caroline or whatever her name was. Uh, all right. Uh, we're going to keep this thing moving, guys. We're down to our final few comics of the evening. Your next guy coming up, he is going to be on this show in just two weeks in D.C. And honestly, I thought about not letting him perform here because this show he's going to be on is going to be dark and twisted. It's edgy. There's a fucking picture of a sword on the poster. It's that edgy. It's the most offensive show. It's despicable. People who perform on it should probably lose their jobs. Anyways, your next comic is probably going to go right from the show to marching on the Capitol. Because he's such a fucking dark, evil, edgy piece of shit. But he's also a very funny and nice guy. Everybody put your hands together for Charlie Wary. Jacob just told me not to say this, but he is on that show with me. That's why he. <laughs> yeah, I'm a sick guy. I don't know. I'm not gonna. I, okay, I'll just I'll get into it. I was uh, was reading some science news recently, uh, <laughs> and it said whites are the best. No. I <laughs> I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is ah, ah, Why do I have these thoughts? Ah, I want to start fires ah, With my political messaging No, uh Change comes from within Hey <laughs> Um, no, but I was reading science news <laughs> Um I read that uh, every year, because of like uh, climate change and like human uh, interference, thirty thousand species, like twenty to thirty thousand species, die or go extinct every year. I read that. I was like, wow, thirty thousand species go extinct. I was like, oh my god. I had no idea there was 
30,000 different types of animals. Oh my. <laughs> I thought there was like a hundred, like I started counting how many, like I think of how many animals I could think of. I got to like 120. That's like including dinosaurs. I'm like, who are, what are these animals that are dying? I like look into it, it's mostly bugs. I'm not gonna lie, I'm sorry. I wanna be, you know, a champion of Mother Earth, but it's like, I don't really give a shit if bugs are going extinct. I don't know, like I, you always hear people are always like, save the bees, right? Like bees are important. I don't know. It's like, yeah, I could give, I, I don't know. Can bees feel love? I don't think so. <laughs> Can bees feel love the way a human or a, a hippo does? I don't think so. <laughs> but then I was thinking, I was like, that's kind of a fucked up thought for me to have. And then I was like, yeah, bugs, like insects and bugs, that's like the last form of acceptable bigotry in America, right? People say such fucked up things to bugs, they'll be like, ew, don't touch me. <laughs> Why can't it touch you, bro? That's fucked up. People will be like, I don't want it in my house with me. Whoa. Really? Oh my God. People, like restaurants will get shut down because they have too many bugs in it. It's like, wow, it's systematic. <laughs> That's sick. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> uh, we have superhero fans in here. The Marvel superheroes, they're popular. This is, uh, this, this is a superhero I hate. I hate Daredevil, right? The character Daredevil, right? Like, uh, cause he's just a blind guy, right? <laughs> like, he doesn't have superpowers, he's just blind. Like, but there's a lot of people, like, love, like, he has a following. One of my friends, he loves Daredevil, he's like, how can you hate Daredevil? No, he has powers, it's not that he's just blind. He has powers, he can hear really well. I'm like, oh, you mean like every blind guy can? <laughs> oh, you mean he could just do blind guy shit? I don't know. That made me, that made me want to, I, I want to invent a, a new superhero. I don't have a name for him, but uh, it'd just be a guy in a wheelchair. <laughs> and people are like, what's his superpower? I'm like, he can go really fast downhill. Uh, <laughs> His kryptonite is going up hills. <laughs> uh, his villain is the hill master. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, uh, my dog, I got a dog. My dog, he, animals stare at weird things, right? Animals are weird. My dog, all, this happens to him a lot. He'll be sleeping, he'll get up, and he'll just stare at like a corner of the room. And like, I, I'm like, oh my God. Every time he does this, I'm like, okay, there's one of two options. One, my house is haunted. I have an evil specter here, only my dog can see. The second option, less likely, but the second option is that my dog is like a stupid animal that just looks at shit. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think that, I think, I'm, I, think I need an exorcist. Uh, I don't know, but they, dogs are, dogs are crazy, animals are crazy. My dog, he, like some dogs hump things. My dog doesn't hump things, that's good, but he does this, which might be worse. Whenever he gets like corny, when he gets an erection, He'll sit and he'll stare at me. And he sits like he does like the good boy sit that he normally does when he's like done, done something well, he wants like a treat. He sits, but he has a huge erection. He stares at me and he has this look of confusion and fear on his face. And he just goes, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, I don't know what you want, dude. I can't help you. you, you gotta, I don't know, it might be because you're like, I don't know, he doesn't have balls. He might be like, what do I do with this? I don't know, but I, I always think, it's always funny to imagine like your animals like acting like people, like if, we're, like if a people, a person acted like your animal, right? So whenever I see my dog doing that, I just imagine like, what if there was a man who like was really horny, <laughs> he's like wants to have sex with his wife, so he gets naked, sits in a chair with a huge throbbing erection, <laughs> she walks in, he stares at her and goes, please, please, fuck me, I don't know what to do with it, please. I, I don't know, I, how successful would that be? I don't know, I might do some experiments later. Uh, anyways, my name's Charlie Waring. Let's give it up for your host, Jacob McFadden. Guy's fucking sick and twisted. Anyways, July 14th in uh, Washington, D.C. I guess the two of us will be there. I'm just there to monitor him. It's a court release thing. I'm there to supervise. All right. Um, I was polite. I didn't bring it up right away. Uh, you fucks a bet? <laughs> now she's gone. That's why I'm bringing it up now. 
You fucked a bet? You fucked a bet and then you tried to fuck me? Then you tried to fuck me after you fucked. That's, you know what we call you? A chuckle fucker. You're not the only one here. It's, it's not a good thing, sir. Uh, I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, well, hey. Who do you think drove here, baby? Come on. I know what he says. He says, ass, gas, or grass? Uh, it's grass, baby. You hope. You hope. Wayne, what do you do for a living? I am a manager for a software company for catering. Yeah, no. That sounds so made up. <laughs> I'm a manager for a software company for catering? Wow, that's like, you threw out like three different rods, so I wouldn't know where you're going. That's crazy. I work for him. You work for him? Oh, you used to, and then what? You sucked your way to the top and got out? Now you're taken care of? Fucking chuckle fuckers, dude. I'm telling you, that's how they do it. That's why I'm not allowed at the funny bone anymore. Um, all right. Guys, we are down to our final two comics of the evening. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Are you guys ready? All right. Your penultimate comic tonight. You know him as a caniac. This guy loves raising canes so much that after the show, he's going to sit on the porch and get a stick and poke of the word canes on his upper left forearm. And he just consented to it on video. Everybody, put your hands together for Ayush. Everyone, give a round of applause for our host, Jacob. That's right, that's right. The Lucky Charms mascot really let himself go, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what's up, that's what's up. I'm 21. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Cool, cool, woohoo! Woo that's what's up. I, uh, I'm, I gotta get back into the dating scene now, uh, but it's tough trying to date as an Indian. We don't have a lot of things going for us. Like, uh, my ex-girlfriend, she was white. Um, so, like, it's safe to say that the British were coming when we were dating, like, just like, like shit, the British were coming, and then they were coming again, and they were coming again. <laughs> My record was seven, but, like, that's besides the point. Like, that's not the problem. The problem is that Indians have a lot of negative stereotypes about us, right? Like, like, one of the stereotypes is that we're smelly. But, like, no shit, have you ever been to fucking India before, dude? It's hot as fuck. Wearing deodorant in India has the same outcome as a white man getting pulled over by the police. Nothing happens. Like, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. But another thing that doesn't help us is that Indians live in such a hot part of the world, but evolution decided, nah, you're going to stay hairier than Italian men. You're going to be the hairiest motherfuckers on the planet. That doesn't help. I get really jealous of Mexicans because they're like they're like Siamese cats. They they're hairless, man. <laughs> deodorant works on them, right? I mean, they're Mexican, so everything about them works. Like the deodorant they do, like everything works. <laughs> everything works. The Mexicans are the hardest working people I know, man. Give fuck Congress. Give me four Mexicans in a cahoot. We'll solve this country in an afternoon, bro. Yeah, I, uh, as an Indian, I, uh, I just want to say, uh, fuck the British. Uh, also, yeah, 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 yeah. India, Jindabad, India, Jindabad. That's right, that's what's up, that's what's up. Fuck the British, man. When Queen Elizabeth died, I was, I've never been more happier. I was so happy. I started doing Bhangra on that bitch's grave, bro. I'm not even Punjabi. Oh my gosh, the, the hate I have for the royal family is over, it's multi-generational. The next time I see her grandchildren, it's gonna turn into an NFL punting practice. Just, bah, just taking them, right? I mean, her family single-handedly caused the suffering of billions of human beings for centuries. Right, like, she cre her family created this culture 
in these colonized countries to where people had to worry about survival before they can worry about thriving. So they had to worry about their basic needs before they can thrive as individuals. And I really realized this because I live, a, my life and my parents' life were very different growing up. Like, my parents grew up really poor in India. And that meant like, for example, my dad had to scoop cow shit with his hands so that he could fuel fire so that he could cook food to eat. And I grew up complaining about Spotify Premium, you know, like, like just very different lives, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm recently getting out of a heartbreak, or out of a breakup. I'm still heartbroken, I'd say. Uh, and it's tough. It's tough going through heartbreak because it is, you know, like, I, uh, the way I would put it is that I had to, I had to lose my arm to gain my soul. Um, because I saw her as an extension of myself, you know, we dated for three years. It was like, I, I thought of us in terms of us and not as much as in terms of me. Um, and so, with all that being said, I think I'm ready to sign up for the Special Olympics now. <laughs> I, uh, I'm gonna be crossing up people with one hand. That's right, that's right. Dunking on the wheelchair, people. <laughs> uh, I'm ready. I'm ready, bro. Um, I appreciate it. I think that's gonna be my time. Thank you guys very much. My name is Ayush Patodia. Give a round of applause for Jacob, everyone. Ayush, everybody. With a classic American message of fuck the crown. Hey. I agree with that. And hey, you know what? I say you have any tea, fucking throw it in the river. Hey. That's right. Fuck them. And why why not dress like an engine while you're at it? <laughs> God damn. What? I thought we were being historically accurate, guys. <laughs> it is funny. It is funny when you think about the Boston Tea Party to go back in time and be like, that's how racist they were back then. They're like, what if a bunch of white guys just put feathers on our hats and throw shit away? They'll be like, eh, no one did it. All right. Are you two hillbillies done? All right. We're down to our last comic, who, uh, <laughs> the one we recorded. Yeah. All right, everybody. For our final performance tonight, our headliner this evening. I believe this is his first time here. Everybody, put your hands together for Fernando Rivera. All right. Uh, guys, what a night. Uh, happy July 4th, everybody. Um, I appreciate everyone coming out. Everyone, give a round of applause to yourselves because you're all comics and you all hung out and stayed and at least tried to be supportive. It doesn't come naturally to us, so I appreciate that. And I never do this, but can we all give Silver a round of applause? Give Silver a round of applause. Silver comes out to all these shows and records everything, so he catches you when you do horrible and when you do good. And when you do good, you should give him the $10 and get your clip and not just do it yourself, you pieces of shit. Looking at you, Ayush. I'm just kidding. I, I assumed you're a cheapskate because you brought Raising Canes in here. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, what a great night. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. Uh, if you want a recording of anything, remember to hit him silver. Um, Rachel is our bartender downstairs. Thank you for coming out tonight. Good night. Goodbye. Yeah. 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 Yeah.